What's going on there, watch fans? It's Amit Dave Panda, and welcome to my watch video. So today I want to talk about the new Tudor Black Bay Panda uh, chronograph that just came out last month at Watches and Wonders uh, in Geneva, Switzerland. This came out of nowhere. Uh, this was a huge shock to the watch community, to the enthusiasts, collectors, and the like. Uh, me included. Uh, I definitely was not expecting Tudor to come out with such a a wow watch. The Tudor's inspired by vintage models from Rolex and Tudor's past. For those of you who are not aware, Tudor is owned by Rolex, a subsidiary brand of Rolex. They've been around since the 1940s. Um, they're incredibly well made. The value is magnificent. Since their return in 2013, they've like, you know, won all kinds of awards for design, for quality. They're just an amazing brand. They're one of my favorite brands. What makes this Tudor Black Bay Panda chronograph incredible? Well, it looks a lot like a vintage Daytona from the 60s and 70s. Um, it's actually cooler because the vintage Daytonas from the 60s and 70s were three registered chronographs, which means they have three subdials. Um, one for the second hand, two for the chronograph. This only has two subdials and they're symmetric, one at the nine o'clock and one at the three o'clock position. Now, this watch uh, is 41 millimeters in case diameter. It's on an oyster style riveted bracelet. A riveted bracelet is a detail you found on vintage Rolex watches, uh, even some Daytonas and um, some Submariner watches. So it's kind of nice that they have this um, stylized bracelet from their past. Um, it just makes it more, I think, utilitarian, more of a tool watch. The rivets don't do anything. They're purely, purely aesthetic, but it doesn't bother me. I know it bothers a lot of people that, it, that the rivets have no functionality, but honestly, I think it just looks really cool. Powering this watch is the Tudor in-house movement uh, with 70-hour power reserve, and it's COSC certified. This comes in two dial variations. One is an opaline white dial with black subdials, and one is a black dial with silver subdials. Again, this is a configuration we saw on vintage Rolex Daytona watches. This has screw down pushers and a screw down crown. It's water resistant to 200 meters. It's very rare to find a, a chronograph so water resistant. My only gripe with the chronograph is that it's, you know, you've got to unscrew the pushers to uh, start the chronograph, but it does ensure water resistancy. And honestly, if you're in that much of a rush uh, to time something, then this is probably not the watch for you. Uh, the crystal is a domed sapphire crystal. Uh, all the vintage, you know, Rolex Daytona models and even the vintage Tudor models, a lot of them had domed uh, plexiglass crystal. So again, they're maintaining that design cue from their, from their past, which I think is great. The height has been, you know, reduced because Tudor originally came out with a uh, Black Bay chronograph in 2017. And the only issue there was that the watch was a little too high and a little too thick. So they've shaved off like uh, half a millimeter in thickness. And now it's about 15 millimeters high, which is still thick, but it doesn't look as thick on the wrist. Um, I really dig everything about this watch, even the date. I'm not a date guy at all, but the date is at the six o'clock position. It's easy to read at a glance. It's well situated. It doesn't stick out like most dates do at the three o'clock, but then you're like squinting and staring at it like a stalker girlfriend just to figure out what date it is. It's actually very legible. It's very clean. Uh, it's hard for me to decide which one I want. I, I like honestly both the opaline white and the black. In, in fact, I know that most people like the white, um, but I really am digging the black with the silver subs. It's even got that red writing on the tip of the chronograph hand and on the dial, uh, which is a kick to throw back as well, which is incredibly cool. The best part about this watch is the price. 5225 on a steel uh, riveted oyster bracelet, and it also comes on a leather bunch strap, which is like a, like a, a cuff, which I think cheapens it and makes it look like a diesel watch and it also comes on a fabric strap for 4900 which is great because you have options there's a lot of people who don't want to wear watches on bracelets it's already a thick watch and it's a big watch to begin with um, and the bracelet definitely adds a little a layer of thickness to it so for those who have smaller wrists i would recommend the black fabric strap uh, for 4900 if you want to buy it and, and have it be an investment of value 
hands down, I would say buy it on a bracelet if you can find it. This is going to be very tough to find. Uh, at 5225 bucks. believe me, it's already going for almost 10000 in the secondary market. Now, thank God I have access to, you know, Tudor from authorized Tudor retailers. Uh, there's no guarantee I can get them just because they're so sought after and so in demand. This is half the price. The retail price of this watch is less than half the price of the current Rolex Daytona. And the only thing that the Rolex Daytona offers, in my opinion, is a brushed and polished bracelet. Okay, it's nicer. It's made out of a nicer stainless steel. It's made out of 904L steel, not 316L steel. And it's got a black ceramic bezel. Um, I prefer the layout, the design, the configuration of the, the Tudor, hands down. Um, I think this is gonna be, this, this particular model Tudor watch, I think is gonna catapult them to another level. Um, all of those people who want a Rolex Daytona and don't want to pay 40 grand in the secondary market to get one, even if you have to pay double of the retail of the current Tudor at like 10 or 11 grand, it's still a bargain in my opinion. Um, and it has everything the Rolex has and more in a way because it has those vintage design cues and anyone who really wants a Daytona that knows anything about Rolex is they really love the vintage Rolex Paul Newman Daytona is from the 60s and 70s, but they don't want to pay a million dollars for it. Um, honestly, the, the the current Rolex Daytona with ceramic bezel is already very expensive for a steel watch at over 13,000. This to me is a bargain. And I'm talking as someone who does not like chronograph watches. I will buy this watch all day. I will buy both of them. I'll put one in the safe and I'll wear the other one. And uh, I highly recommend so definitely reach out to me at amitdevhonda at gmail.com or visit my website at www.amitdevhonda.com. Rock on, fly back, and stay healthy.